A warm welcome to this lecture on ancient grains spelt Emma and Einkorn. Success depends on a stable supply chain. My name is Friedrich Longin and I'm the head of the wheat research group at the University of Hohenheim where we work intensively with ancient grains Einkorn, Emma and Spelt. First of all, some rules. This presentation can be used for internal training purposes. It is not allowed to publish it or any part of it without prior written agreement of myself. Liability. This presentation was built up very carefully. Nevertheless, the author takes no liability on the correctness of any result or data shown. The target audience is uh, farmers, millers, bakers, and other actors of the cereal supply chain. What is ancient grain? First of all, a picture. On the left side here we see ears of Einkorn. Then next to it, brown emmer, white emmer, black emmer. Right hand side here, spelt with its typical ears and here downwards is his uh, St. John's rye. As we see already, ancient crane is not just one species, it's more. But important is to know that ancient crane is not a scientific name, it's just a marketing name. And depending on the marketing uh, of a company, there is more or less defined inside uh, ancient cranes. I personally, as scientists, am not happy with this definition ancient crane. I would use the name of the cereal. For instance, when I have an Einkorn bread, why not telling the story, this is Einkorn. This is the oldest wheat of uh, ancestor of the very well-known bread wheat. Wheat and its family. What is Einkorn Emmon spelled in relation to bread wheat? Wheat is a really big family with a lot of subspecies, and I don't want to tackle all. I want to tackle the major ones, which is wheat, followed by durum wheat, and then I tackle spelt, Emma, and Einkorn. Wheat is the most used in the world. And when we look from the perspective of a wheat, spelt wheat is relatively close related. And to make it a bit easy in a picture, let's assume spelt uh, wheat uh, like in humans. Wheat and spelt would be uh, like black and white humans, quite looking different regarding uh, color of the skin, but genetically almost identical. That we can also cross spelt with wheat and vice versa. Compared to wheat, Emma is something different. And making the same comparison with humans, this would be at least a gorilla. That's a much larger genetical distance and we cannot cross Emma with wheat. Emma and Durum, on the other hand, are closely related like wheat and spelt. And Einkorn, it's even more far away from bread wheat. When we assume wheat once again as humans, uh, Einkorn would be something like a founder monkey, also quite distant from a gorilla. That's really a big genetical difference. Einkorn cannot be crossed with Emma and not with wheat and not with spelt. It has very different genetics, but all in the same big family wheat. The next point is we should tackle wheat. When we harvest wheat with a combined harvester, we get kernels. The same holds true for durum wheat. But when we harvest spelt wheat or emma and einkorn, we get husks. It's a halt wheat as we harvest this husk, which is nothing else than uh, grains here inside with the husk outside. And we need a further 
working step in the mill to dehull this uh, spelt and to get outside the kernels. Let's have a look on the supply chain. From left to right, we start with breeders who develop new varieties. Then the farmer is taking the new variety, grow it, we come to the miller making the flour, the baker makes the bread, and the consumer at the end is happy with new products. And he's or she is the one who brings the money in the system. The consumer pay for the product, and this money is given back to all players of the product chain. Let's assume a big company is today convinced I want to have a product launch as soon as possible 10,000 tons of product of Einkommen. Then the most important thing is where do I get the flour or from the miller uh, needs not the flour, he needs the kernels. And then the problem arises rapidly that only a few hundred kilograms of kernels are available at some farms. You must find the farms already. And then in the farms these are often not a real variety, like in big crops these are some mixtures they have from whatever. Ever. Not a problem, we can go to the uh, granaries of cereal production, which would be the Black Sea region or the United States. We get wheat there, no problem, but we don't get any income ammo or spot. They don't have. Then let's go to the stock market where we can get easily wheat, Chicago Board of Trade or Martif in Paris. We can get wheat. But we cannot get Ancon Ammon spelled. Thus, we cannot realize ad hoc big amounts of products with Ancon Ammon spelled. The crucial success factor for ancient grain is here a creation of a stable supply chain. And this is only possible when, when we get organized that the farmer. Sorry, the breeder, the farmer, the miller and the baker get the price they need to get and that when they produce the engine crane that the next uh, persons or player in the uh, product, uh, supply chain take over the goods and the baker and finally consume. Therefore we need a sustainable and fair cooperation along the chain because you never know on the reaction of consumers. And thus we need that those players interact in a fair and long way together. And coming back to the situation that me as a big company, I want to tomorrow launch a big amount of Ancon Emma. We cannot buy it anywhere. There is, it is not available in the market. Thus we have to build up a sustainable way. And let's look on the time span of it. We eat today an Einkorn product, which is produced in a bakery this morning or yesterday evening or something like that, with flour that was produced by the miller a few weeks ago. The miller has taken the kernels from the farmer out from the last harvest and harvest for winter cereals is in July. The last July was the harvest. But the harvest of Emma in last July, this was already sown October the year before. With the seeds, the farmer has bought at the breeder. And the breeder once again has required one to two years to multiply the seeds before farmer sowing. That altogether to launch larger amounts of Einkorn Emma are spelled in the market. We have to keep in mind that the supply chain needs two to four years to realize this. This is the crucial success factor for engine cranes. Let's go a bit away from the product chain in the whole, 
go to the particular actors and look on their advantages, risk, or what they have to care about using these engine cranes. Let's start with the farmer. First of all, he has to grow them and to harvest something, which is at the end a yield, which is shown here in decitons per hectare. These are 100 k k kilogram per hectare. As we, in, and we did here a trial, a very correct trial. We used 15 varieties of bread wheat, 15 of durum wheat, of spelt, Emon Einkorn once again, 15 of each. And they have been grown at a location, at the same location, but next to each other, because each one got another treatment. Emma, sorry, durum and wheat gets high intensive fertilization in German agriculture, while spelt and especially Emmon Einkorn considerably lower amounts. Therefore, we separated the trials which have been next to each other, but have been grow in typical farmer situation, which is today done. And this we have done not only at a single location, we have done across four different locations to see also the plasticity of environment reactions of the crops. And the average across 15 varieties in four locations, we harvested 80 decitons per hectare of wheat grains. Only 60 of durum grains. And for spelt, we harvested not grains, we harvested hulls, hulled wheat, which have been 70 decitons, for Emma a bit more than 50, and for Einkorn a bit less than 50 decitons per hectare. Then the miller has to dehull them, and at the end the kernel yield of spelt was 50 deciton as compared to 80 decitons of bread wheat. Emma was 35 around and Einkorn 27. That means Einkorn, Emma and spelt has a considerably lower yield per hectare than bread wheat. And thus to motivate the farmer, you have to pay a higher price. And this is also an important point I want to stretch here. My personal opinion is that spelt Emmon Einkorn are interesting wheat species for niche markets, which could be uh, large than uh, several hundred thousand hectares, but they are not able to feed the growing world. This is wheat. But coming back to spelt Emmon Einkorn, when we want a farmer to grow them, we have them to pay a higher price. And not only due to reduced yield, we have also to compensate the risk he's taking with a specific crop, which I will show two slides later. And for farmers, I really highly recommend that you grow only spelt Emmon Einkorn when you have a contract with a mill which warrants your price and which warrants the takeover of the goods at the harvest. We have hulled wheat. That means we have consequences of it. We harvest the combined harvester husks or spikelets with husk and kernel and then as Additional working step is required in the mill to dehull the kernels, to open it and to get out the kernels. Thus, it's a further working step required and we have to think about storage. We get it, the miller gets it from the farmer in this way. That means the volume for Emmon Einkorn and Spelt storage is much larger than for bread wheat or durum wheat. Because we have in bread wheat and durum wheat, we get directly kernels from the farmer. Here in spelt Emmon Einkorn, we get the spikelets. And the second point is what's the yield behind the kernel yield? And this is shown here. 100% was the raw yield, which a farmer has delivered, and then it was dehulled. And on average, about 70% of the raw yield 
have been kernels for spells and for ammo similarly. But for Einkorn, it was 10% less, only 60% kernels of raw yield. Furthermore, we see a big difference in the varieties. This spelt variety here had only a kernel yield of 60%, while this one here of 75. Thus, it's also interesting for Miller to look on uh, the kernel yield of the varieties. Thus, we have several disadvantages. Dehulling costs money. The hulls, uh, the spikelets have to be stored, which is a, a larger volume. But we have the advantage that the kernels are tightly closed by the husks in the field till inside the mill. And we could imagine that a lot of pollution from the air or from fungi grown on the ears are on the husks but not on the kernels, in contrast to breadweed where they are on the kernels. Further, two important points for cropping. When you Google, you find a lot about spelt Ammon Einkorn are especially something for very poor soils or maybe in mountainous regions. And I want to show you that this is not fully true. And you see here a comparison. We had two locations. One is the Oberer Lindenhof. This is on the Swabian Alp, about 900 meters above sea level, uh, medium soil quality and quite cold and a lot of rain. While Hohenheim is uh, very good soils, perfect climate for cereal production, uh, warm, not too warm, and rain when you need rain. And we see here the yield in tons per hectare for spelt and the poorer region we had 7.2 tons a yield and the better we had one ton more and was even more pronounced for Ammon Einkorn. Thus it holds true for spelt Ammon Einkorn like for bread wheat and other crops. The better the soil and the climate the better is the yield. Further important point is lodging. Emma and Einkorn are very tall and especially Emma has a very big ear on a tall uh, straw. Thus in climate situation like we have actually at least in our a home country where we have uh, thunderstorms uh, close to harvest, we often get the phenomenon of lodging. And taking this into account, I would say yes, for sure, Emma Einkorn spelled love better soils, more fertilization, better climate. But on the other hand, when you go to poorer situations, the plant height is reduced and thus also the risk of lodging. And furthermore, Emma and Einkorn does not lose that fast its grain yield in poorer conditions than bread wheat. Thus, I would say in poor regions you can try Einkorn, Emma and Spelt better. It's better than bread wheat there. And for a farmer, the principal point for a successful cropping is first of all, Emma and Einkorn you must harvest if possible standing. Thus, care about lodging. And for Emma, there's also, since the new race in uh, yellow rust appeared, uh, the problem of yellow rust. While in Einkorn, we have the problem that uh, the uh, development of the, um, the plants is very slow at the beginning. That means that you have rapidly, uh, or you have the impression uh, from October till uh, end of March that uh, nothing works to few plants, but then Einkorn comes very rapidly and fills the gaps. But you can only fill the gap when in the meantime not all the herbs have been grown fantastically using the light which Einkorn offers to him. Thus, caring about weeds is a major issue 
in Einkommen. Having a look on nitrogen use efficiency. In the same trial, once again wheat, durum, spelt, ammon, einkon. We see here the amount of nitrogen fertilizer we applied. We had about uh, 60 kJ of N min in the soil. And then we added for wheat and durum 115 kilogram of nitrogen fertilizer. For spelt only 75 and for Ammon Einkorn only 30, which is mainly due to the fact that Ammon Einkorn gets so tall and have a high risk of lodging and too much fertilizer uh, leads to too high plants which lodge even more. You can also see this in plant height, while uh, wheat and durum was about uh, 80 to 87 centimeters tall, spelled Ammon Einkorn was above 115 centimeters tall. Thus, spelled in ammo and also income have, has also the potential to uh, build a lot more straw than bread wheat. For grain yield, we have already seen the differences with wheat being much better. Looking on protein content, we have a slightly different situation. Durham wheat has a by far higher protein content than bread wheat. Dinkel, oh, sorry, spelled ammo and einkorn similar level and higher than bread wheat but here we must take into account that protein content is directly related to the amount of nitrogen fertilizer we give and looking on the high amount we gave to bread wheat and the lower amounts we gave to spelt ammon einkorn means clearly that uh, spelt and especially ammon einkorn have the potential to form a lot of protein Let's look on nitrogen use efficiency and I calculated here three different parameters. First of all, I calculated the so-called nitrogen use efficiency, which is the grain yield divided by the nitrogen fertilizer amount which have been given to the crop. Thus we use grain yield and divided it here by the fertilization level. And we see that durum was poorer than bread wheat spelled similar than bread wheat, but Ammon Einkorn considerably better in nitrogen use efficiency. Much less grain yield, but also much less uh, fertilizer use. Looking on protein yield, protein yield is the product of protein multiplied by yield divided by 100. We see uh, that wheat and durum is very close to each other, spelled Ammon Einkorn considerably lower. This is similar than the grain yield, but to me, when looking on the nitrogen efficiency, we should also take here into account what we have fertilized. And this is shown here. I just have used the protein yield and divided it by the num, uh, uh, amount of nitrogen fertilizer used. And here we see that spelt has a better use efficiency than wheat and ammon einkorn considerably, considerably better nitrogen use efficiency than wheat and durum. Thus under the recently applied cropping system with high fertilizer for wheat and durum, wheat has for sure the highest grain yield and also the highest protein yield. In contrast, spelt and ammo has much more straw yield. Einkorn also, but spelt and ammo once again even more. And ammo and einkorn have by far the best nitrogen use efficiency. And nitrogen use efficiency only focuses on yield, but when we focus on protein and yield and divided by the fertilizer um, uh, amount applied, once again, Ammon Einkorn is much better than bread wheat. And so we can say that cultivating Einkorn, Ammon spelt increases on the one hand agrobiodiversity, which is very important, and on the other hand, looking on the fertilizer story, it is more sustainable and thus also interesting for environment. And therefore it's no surprise that there are initiatives, especially in regions where water is safe for consu human consumption, which 
are very interested in growing Icon Amon spell due to the low fertilizer applied. And this, this is marketed and something like water saving bread. Okay, that's all about agronomy. Let's go to the middle. Here we have only few information. We mainly looked on the kernel structure, the kernel size and its structure. Once again, for wheat, durum is spelled Ammon Einkom. We see here the thousand kernel mass, that means the weight of thousand kernel, which was 48 grams for wheat, similar for durum, but spelled an Ammon considerably higher than bread wheat. Einkorn, on the other hand, much lower thousand kernel mass. And this thousand kernel mass is, when we look here on the length of the kernels, uh, which is similar than that of bread wheat, that means the kernels must be much smaller than that of bread wheat. And this has also severe consequences for milling. When you imagine much smaller kernels than bread wheat, that means we have a, a small amount of endosperm with this uh, roughly same amount of uh, aluron layer and other layers outside, means the flower yield of extracted refined flour is much lower in income than in the other wheat species. Regarding the length, we can see that spelt and emma has considerably longer grains than bread wheat. When we look on another character, the virtuosity and the semolina, because in durum wheat for pasta industry, uh, the main, uh, there is not flour of interest, but semolina for pasta production. Thus the main uh, uh, yield the miller's interest is semolina. We see that uh, Durham has the highest semolina yield of all, followed by Emmer, which is not surprising as Emmer is closely, much closer related to Durham than all the other species here. Spelt similar than bread wheat and Einkom much lower than all the others. But looking on the virtuosity, we see especially that spelt and einkorn is here very low, while emma on average very low, but it has a variation uh, uh, till 60%. That means spelt and einkorn are really soft wheat, but difficult to get semolina, while in emma and bread wheat there exist varieties which are very soft, up to varieties which are very hard. And you have to deselect those which you are interested in. That was all about milling. Let's go to product quality and what is important to care about to realize products which are acceptable or even better than acceptable for the consumer. First thing is when we discuss about wheat, the protein amount and quality. And as shown in a few slides ago, when we looked at nitrogen use efficiency, the protein content of spelt Ammon Einkorn is higher than that of bread wheat. And when we take into account that protein content is directly linked to the amount of nitrogen fertilization, and that we have fertilized much less nitrogen on M on Einkorn than spelt, and once again, although this was much less than for bread wheat, we see that spelt M on Einkorn has a potential to form large amounts of proteins. However, this protein quality is completely different, and this I want to show here with the sedimentation volume. And we used here the sodium dodecyl sulfate sedimentation volume. We had on average 56 milliliter for wheat, but there was poor and good wheat inside. That means the good, best quality in German, this is E, wheat, 
was about 80 milliliter here and we see that spelt is already considerably lower than bread wheat but let's formulate it positively it's something in distance to bread wheat but m and einkorn is far away from that quality of bread wheat we have much more cleadines than glutenines in m and einkorn as compared to bread wheat maybe we can compare it with the fact of bread wheat 100 or 150 years ago that we had also a lot of cleadines and only a few glutenines but in the last decades intensively breeding on high glutenine and low cleadine content was done in bread wheat and thus we have different duff and baking must be adapted a typical duff for income is looking like that it's very flowing and it's very sticky to machine and everything but when you want to make a good product you have to adapt your technology making uh, making no intensive kneading energy uh, reducing water temperature when you put water to it make long duff fermentation times um, yeah or fold up the, the duff several times making uh, uh, or using also some additives when you're open to use additives but you have to adapt here but when you're willing you are able to make good products thus once again quantity is high quality is low of protein in emma and einkorn and we have looked this in a bit more detail for spelt we have looked worldwide for spelt varieties have sampled what you could get and multiplied at the end we had 160 varieties and we have grown them in three locations uh, in field trials harvested it and put all these uh, 450 batches to a baking lab and what we have seen and we have done a so-called rapid mix test if a bit more ascorbic acid than in a bread wheat rapid mix test and what we have directly seen was that we had varieties which had a good baking quality but we had also varieties which had a poorer considerably poorer baking quality was the same recipe the same location just two different varieties which is no surprise which is the fact also in bread wheat that we have big quality differences and therefore we have quality classes in bread wheat but in spelt many actors forget that we have also different varieties and spelt is never equal to another spelt variety and when we look here now on low volume from a low volume to a high volume we see from the 160 varieties something like a Gaussian distribution a few varieties which were with very low low volume and only few varieties with very high low volume and I put some famous varieties here inside in red I marked very old land races here Steiner's Roter Tiroler with very poor baking quality the most famous land race Oberkorn Rotkorn with intermediate low volume and here a Bauländer Spelz which is a also very old land race uh, with excellent baking quality but which is only used for producing green kern which is smoked kernels which are harvested three or four weeks before normal kernel harvest and the other in black are modern varieties we see here one uh, several with not so high baking quality with intermediate baking quality and with very high baking quality so as to sum up like in bread wheat autumn spelt exists a big variation between varieties regarding baking quality and also in modern and old varieties we have good quality and poor quality and that does not mean that when you have a good quality spelt that automatically there is some people who make uh, put some wheat flour inside they are very old 
spelt varieties with good, excellent baking quality, and thus uh, we have good quality and poor quality available in the market. A miller, a trader, and also a breeder cannot all the time make a baking trial to understand whether a batch of spelt has a good or poor quality. Therefore, we tested a lot of indirect methods in this baking trial as well. We looked on the farina graph, on the alveo graph, we looked on protein content, on sedimentation volume, and for sure also on the extensor graph. And uh, I want to show you a bit data on the extensor graph just to uh, understand how it works. It's a stretching test of the duff. And when you get a curve like this, you have a bit poor quality, while a curve like this, a big curve with a lot of, uh, has a lot of energy, and this uh, will deliver a good uh, product. And furthermore, it's not only an indirect test to uh, measure baking quality, it's also to describe the stretching ability of the duff. And from this, you can make important conclusions for what kind of product you can use this type of flour uh, in your um, product line. We found big differences in the extensor graph for, between the varieties. Here, a well-known, very good quality uh, spelt variety called Frankenkorn. And you see here an excellent extensor graph, uh, a lot of energy and a long curve. While here, the other one, Baden Krone, uh, low volume and rapidly a breakdown of the tough for poor quality. That big difference, like we have also seen in the low volume already, but we see it also in the tough big differences. And when we look here on the energy data of the extensor graph, we see a big variation from very low values, about 20, to very high values, larger 120. Big variation available between the different varieties. You see here each dot is one spelled variety, that's 160 dots here. And these we have compared to low volume, where we have once again seen a big variation from uh, a bit below 500 milliliter to slightly higher than 700 milliliter. And comparing this extensor graph with low volume, we see a very good correlation. That means for all varieties which have had a low extensor graph value, we had also a low low volume. And vice versa, for those with high energy values, we had also a high low volume. That means uh, the extensor graph could be used as an indirect test for predicting baking quality. And compared with alveograph, farinograph, sedimentation volume, protein content, gluten index and gluten content, it was the best indirect method with the highest correlation coefficient to low volume. Furthermore, we get additional information on the elasticity and viscosity of the duff, and especially for the product typically done in Germany for spelt like a Seele or a Knautzenwecken, we need very elastic duff. And here we have varieties like the Oberkulmer Rotkorn or Divimar and Badenstern, which are excellent in this a duff property, but on the other hand, which are in a low volume, only in the intermediate region. Thus we get an indirect predictor for classical baking quality, but in addition, we get from the duff information further info. Making extensor graph an interest in very interesting method to judge the quality of spalt. We use this technique also for Emma. And it worked here very well as well. We see here differences. This was a Emma called Farvento with a very poor extensor graph. Consider a battler already the Emma called Spreads Albuvale. And you see here a breeding line, which is once again better. 
means also an emma, which have been never bred for bread making quality. We have differences between the varieties regarding bread making and quality and regarding duff quality. But here also knowledge on the quality is interesting to maximize the chance to get good products. And we should keep in mind, this is the emma curves and here we see an example for a spelt curve. I used the variety Zollernspelt, which is a good quality spelt wheat. And you see a big difference to the extensive graph curves of Emma. Once again confirming, Emma is in quality really another world than spelt. And spelt is also a bit distant from bread wheat. Thus, when you deal with Emma and Einkorn, you really have to adapt technology in bread making processes in order to maximize your quality. That's all about baking. Let's go a bit further to the consumer and look inside special ingredients. Keeping in mind that maybe when we find an interesting ingredient, this is also an uh, uh, attractive thing to sell Ancon and Emma. First of all, we looked at the minerals because wheat is already an important source for a mineral rich diet when eating whole grain wheat. And we tested a lot of minerals, calcium, mangan, zinc, sulfur, phosphate and others. And for all we see here, bread wheat, then durum, spelt, M and einkorn. I don't want to go in details, but we see everywhere spelt, uh, sorry, bread wheat is lowest or maximum at the same level than the others. And taking all minerals into account, standardizing them and summing up, we see bread wheat here and spelt Emma Einkorn here, showing the difference from the slide before that spelt Emma Einkorn has a higher mineral content than bread wheat. And to summarize, wheat, and it's important only when we eat whole grain wheat, is already an important source for mineral rich diet. And Emma spelt and especially Einkorn have even more minerals than wheat. That's very interesting for a whole grain diet, whole grain diet, the mineral content. For sure, we have to question the availability of these minerals in the final bread. I don't know, studies are not really available, but I would at least state when there's much more inside, there should also be slightly more available for the consumer. Further interesting ingredient are the carotenoids and here specifically lutein. Lutein is everywhere in the plant where, where you have the color intensively yellow. And you see here wheat, durum wheat, einkorn, emma and spelt wheat. The lutein content we see Durum considerably higher than bread wheat, which is no surprise because in, at least in France and Germany, uh, the pasta has to be very yellow, ideally without using eggs. And therefore, uh, durum wheat is bred for high carotenoid content. Emmons belt were on the same low level than bread wheat, but Einkorn, surprisingly, four to eight fold more lutein than bread wheat. That means Einkorn has very high content of lutein. And you have seen this already in analysis. Here is the uh, whole grain flour from bread wheat and the extract for the analysis of lutein. And next to it is the Einkorn flour with the extract and you see directly the yellow color difference. And this yellow color difference is the interesting thing with lutein, why it's also used often in products to make them yellow. And here you see an Einkorn cake. It's baked with whole grain without eggs. And you see an intensively yellow color. And this is one interesting thing with this lutein, that Einkorn has so much lutein, you get really 
attractive yellow color on your products. And even uh, you can cheat uh, people who are not really willing to eat whole grain, like children. The, you can put einkorn inside and they don't recognize that it's whole grain because you get a much uh, yellow color, it's not brown, and you get also another uh, aromatic profile. It's much more intensively, not this um, intensively whole grain uh, aroma, it's more nutty and freshy. And for sure, looking on lutein, when you go to uh, a supermarket, you see a lot of pro products with lutein enriched, uh, telling you that it's very important for your health. Uh, only a small part is true, but nevertheless, lutein is set in relation to problems with the A's, the so-called macular degeneration, which is an important topping, topic for older people, and also with uh, some uh, neurogenic diseases it's discussed, actually. That's very interesting. Further interesting ingredients like sterile ferrolites, which are antioxidative substances interesting in lot of stress uh, situations in the human body. You see here, uh, einkorn has a lot more than breadwheat. And vitamin E. For vitamin E, breadwheat is already one of the most important sources when you especially use the uh, wheat germling and make an oil of it. And einkorn has even slightly higher amount of vitamin E. Thus, to summarize this part, in ancient grains there are interesting ingredients inside and especially einkorn is a highlight with a lot of interesting uh, ingredients inside. Looking also on essential amino acids. Essential amino acids does mean our, we are not able to build them ourselves, thus we have to take them with our food. And leucine is an amino acid which is quite poor in bread wheat. And we see spelt has a bit more and einkorn has considerably more than bread wheat. Thus to improve uh, leucine content in the daily diet, we could eat einkorn. It's better than bread wheat. But once again, we should eat whole grain flour. Coming to the end, back to the supply chain. From the breeder over the farmer, miller, baker, finally to the consumer who brings the money into the system to survive, uh, to let survive all the actors along the supply chain. The breeder, his work in ancient crane is to minimize the largest risk in supply chain. And I would say for Emma and Einkorn, this is especially the high risk of lodging in the field. And this is not done by crossing with wheat and making a second wheat. This is maintaining the species typical characters, but just trying to reduce the risk. Looking in the diversity which is available in Einkorn Emma to improve the, the risk, to reduce the risks. And importantly, we have to ask the question as a breeder, is it worthwhile to invest? Breeding a new variety last 10 to 15 years and costs 1.5 million euro. That's so very expensive. And the breeder has to ask himself whether he gets back the money. The same for the farmer. Is the price okay he gets for, especially taking into account that he has a high risk of cropping it because of the lodging risk or some of the disease risks. We have seen that he has a reduced uh, grain yield, that he has increased expenditure reduced yield, then does he get an acceptable price for it? Same for Miller, does he get the price for what he has to do? First of all, storage. We have hulled wheat, that we have a larger volume to store. Second, we have to dehull the kernels, a further working step. That means, all the, once again, increased expenditure. Then the Miller is somewhat the intermediate position between cropping and product development. Thus he gets the kernels from the farmers and at the end he has to get uh, rid of them, of the flour to the baker and money for it. Thus, can he get a warranty to take over? The baker 
has the problem with difficulties that the protein quality is completely different and he has to adopt the machines and the techniques. And that means also higher risk of product quality and also some ideas how to uh, make specific products uh, hiding a bit the quality problems or um, uh, not hiding, making other products where it's not so important or showing the other quality. And then the real big question, is the consumer willing to pay the real price of the product? The farmer needs more, the miller needs more, the baker needs more. Is the consumer willing to pay this? And for him, the consumer, it's really the fact it's more expensive. And that's not because they want to get more money. It's just because all have uh, reduced, uh, increased expenditure, lower yield per hectare. He get a different quality. He has to be open to other products, other qualities, other look of the products. But he has the high chance we get diversity in field, which is good for environment and in food as well. And we get interesting ingredients, interesting new aroma profiles. And this all is just working. It's only working when we are able to create a stable supply chain. We cannot buy high amounts of income somewhere in the world. We have to ask a miller to, uh, that the miller ask a farmer to grow for him einkorn. And therefore all the partners in the supply chain need warranty of prices and takeover of goods that they don't produce a lot and then they cannot sell it. Thus a sustainable and fair cooperation along the chain has to be done and also taking or uh, uh, putting the risk that the consumer sometimes ask for something and the next day not, that the risk is not only for the baker or put on the miller, that is put on several actors across the chain. And for sure the consumer must know the ancient cranes and when he knows it, it, it doesn't only, it's not enough that he just knows it, he should also want to get it. And then the question arises rapidly, why shall we do ancient cranes when we see so many problems along the chain? For sure, one big trend is having very cheap uh, 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 food for everybody in the world. But in developed countries, there's also a trend to diversity in field and food for specific new ingredients, for interesting new products with different colors and tastes, for regional production and for ancient grains, which have been not manipulated. And this, I'm convinced, is a perfect situation for Spelt Amon Einkorn. For Baker, Miller and Farmer, they have the same system. They are interested in diversification. Not mainly due to uh, environmental impact, mostly due to balance the risk. Further thing is, Spelter Ammon Einkorn will never feed the world. There will be niche markets. But these are ideal to escape from cheap mainstream for small and intermediate companies, which are still enough existing, but which have to compete each day with the global players. And Spelt Ammon Einkorn are, at least to my opinion, actually too complicated that global players go into this market. Too complicated and too small market. Thus, ideal situation for small and intermediate companies. Thus, it would be the aim to generate a stable supply chain via long-term contracts across the chain. And this will generate a win-win-win situation especially for small and medium-sized companies along this supply chain to survive the global competition. And therefore, I believe Spelt M1 Einkorn are an attractive niche crop which doesn't require fundings or whatever, which just survives by interest coming from the consumer. Looking on varieties, there are new interesting varieties in spelt called Albertino with highest yield and highest quality. Solon Pala, same, highest 
yield with intermediate quality and baden zone also highest yield with limited quality. But baden zone and Solon Parler with much better plant health than Albertino. In Emma, Ramses is an old variety which good quality but with a high risk of lodging. There are two new developments which are considerably better, much better in lodging, much better also in disease resistance against yellow rust. They are called Spätz Alpuvel and Rode Heidfelder. And for all others, I can only recommend to avoid them. First, these are no clear varieties, no clear where they are from, no clear what quality they have. Then for Einkorn, we have a variety called Tarzino and soon a second one called Mono Verde. For all who have been, who was the presentation too fast or not too much details, there is a book written by a colleague of mine and myself looking on Emma Einkorn and spelled in much more detail, but also on other uh, ancient brands like Sang Chun, Tsrai, and Chia, Amaranth, Quinoa, and Millet. And with that, I thank you for your interest.